new shows, new hosts. You're tuned into LE Radio. Your online community has changed for trending news, entertainment, and sizzling interviews on various topics. We feature independent music. Get your music in rotation by emailing music at leradio.org. We talk about social issues, cultural norms, and diversity, health and welfare, fashion trends, and more. Make sure to subscribe to us at www.leradio.org for shows and times. Follow us on Facebook, IG, and Twitter at Les Elegance Radio. Be a guest on our show. Email the show at leradio.org. Poon and in love. Every day is Valentine's Day. Poon and in love. Bring a lover, some friends, and come on out to play. Order tickets on your cell phone. Learn a few tricks you can take home. The perfect date night. Ooh, Poon and in love.com. to LE Radio, your number one online community exchange.
Good evening, good evening, beautiful people, and you're tuned in to LE Radio, and I'm your host, Dawn, and I'm joined here today with <laughs> Brittany, my program assistant. How you doing, Brittany? Hello, I'm doing good, I'm doing good. You sounded kind of low over there, but I, I, I understand. <laughs> just like... I understand. How you doing, Gina, the executive I'm good. assistant? <laughs> Yeah, Gina, your mic is your mic is good. Yes, yes, yes. You know, yeah. So, <laughs> it's um, been one. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't even want to go into all the technical issues and the thing been going on here in the last twenty four hours. But anyway, people, thanks again for tuning in. Tonight's topic topic is colorism, internalized racism. So we're gonna talk a little bit about that tonight about how um, prejudice and demonstration. Dem- discrimination um, against individuals of dark skin tone typically among the same ethic very common basically in the black community yes. um, so we're we're gonna get into that a little bit touch on that a little bit but before we get into that topic I'm gonna go ahead on and let the program assistant over there <laughs> um, get at Ellie event blackboard events blackboard um, calendar let us know what's going on Ugh, okay What's good, what's good? Okay, <laughs> so we got quite a few events coming up for the um, LE Radio on the Blackboard. So uh, so we have several shows coming with the Punani Poets, so I'm going to talk about a few of those. We have the first one is Secret of the Pearl, which is going to be an interesting show. Secret of the Pearl is a sexy show. It's filled with music, poetry, dance, and a lot, a lot, a lot of love. Come explore your curiosity and discover the precious secret (laughs) in this theatrical romantic comedy show for lesbians and women who love women. So, you can, we have five shows (laughs) that's going to be going on in our tour. So, we have Los Angeles, of course, my hometown, yes. Uh, (laughs) That's going to be on the 13th at 8 p.m. We have San Francisco, February 14th at 9 p.m. We have Seattle, February 15th at 9 p.m. Making Georgia, uh, February 16th <laughs> at 9 p.m. And then we got Atlanta, Georgia, February 17th, which is a Saturday at 7 p.m. So I'm telling you, ladies, 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 you definitely, definitely do not want to miss the show at all. So then the next one we have is the School of Seduction. This is the one with Maha, oh, right? Yeah. 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 That's yes, the one yes. With the that's the one with Maha. That's the one. The one. love yeah. on this one. <laughs> that's the one you seen in Chicago yes. about how, what, what was the poem she did? Um, that she compared to, to, to smoking and some guys yeah, was like, I'll never look like, at a blunt the same. Yeah. The same. I came, I want to see her. Yeah, I'm I do. I want to see her. Oh, you missed her when she was in Poonani's yeah, Playhouse. I didn't She's see amazing. Her. She's yeah, amazing. So she can sing and she does really good poetry. She's amazing. She is like, so Miss Maha will be okay. doing it up with the School of Seduction. Class is in and the Punani Poets are teaching the ABCs of Love and Jessica Holter's School of Seduction this Valentine's Day season. So again, we got Maha taking the lead in this hyper-romantic cabaret of music, poetry, dance, and audience role play. That was that role play that we saw. Oh. The kissing contest. Oh, yeah. That. But I'm not going to put too much. Y'all just got to come see the show. So in order to see the show, you got to go to Virginia Beach. Of course, we're going to have a show out there. Atlanta, February 14th. We're going to have a show at 8 p.m. Uh, Philadelphia, Philly in the house. We're going to have one February 16th at 10 p.m. in New York City, New York. Hey, <laughs> BK. It is. Okay, sorry. <laughs> February 17th. Yo, I'm from everywhere. I'm a military I brat, see. so I've lived everywhere. <laughs> um, so it's February 17th um, at 10 p.m. for the School of Seduction. Again, another show you're not going to want to miss. And then last but not least, we have our guest tonight, Miss Jessica Holter, the head doctor herself, doing her own show. Now, just a little quote from her. She says, after tw- um, yeah, 23 years in this business of love, I have learned that people will tell you anything if they feel that you will not judge them. The founder of the Punani Poets, who is bringing you more popular romantic comedy show with intimate audience and lovers of friends. So she's going to be in the house so of course favorite stop la is definitely getting some love <laughs> and so that's gonna be january 27th so it's only a couple weeks away then we got oakland she's gonna be in the yay area pretty much all that weekend thursday february 1st friday february 2nd and saturday february 3rd so definitely definitely be sure to get those tickets 
Then she's going to travel over to Gary, Indiana, show some love definitely over there on February 7th at the 8 p.m. show. Then on down to Columbus, Ohio, and I know how they get down in Columbus, so <laughs> yeah. um, with their head dog, the happy hour at 5 p.m. on February 8th, and then down to Nashville, Tennessee, down there, another midnight with the head doctor, and that's going to be February 9th at 9 p.m., then, of course, in New Orleans, like I said, I'm trying to get in that show, <laughs> and that's going to be February 10th at 9 p.m., then over in Dallas, Texas. Now, the Dallas, Texas show is sold out. However, you are able to text to get on the waiting list. That show is February 11 at 6.30 p.m. So definitely text. See if you can get on the waiting list. Hopefully you'll be able to get in. If not, then you're going to have to wait till next year. I'm sorry. Or go to a neighboring state. You can come on to Atlanta. You know, we love you down here. <laughs> and then Bring we have... We got Washington, D.C., Chocolate City, honey. I just can't stand it. Um, Chocolate City, February 15th is going to be 8 p.m. And then, of course, we got to go to Chicago. I mean, Shottown, of course. We got to end it there February 17th at 7.30 p.m. So if you would like to be on the Blackboard, please email me at the show at elliradio.org. Now, I'm going to turn the mic over. To Miss Gina Boo, how you doing tonight? Hey, I'm doing good tonight. And Miss Gina Boo is giving our community spotlight. Um, for this community spotlight, we have Chicago's um, very own Jackie Anderson, who passed away January 7th of this year, 2018. Anderson helped launch the Lesbian Community Cancer Project Clinic on Chicago's South Side. And she was also a member of the Stud for Life under the leadership of Wanda B. She also, in 1996, was inducted into the Chicago LGBT Hall of Fame. Anderson will be missed by the community, and our prayers are with her family and her friends. Yes, yes, yes. She was an amazing woman. I, I heard, had the, yeah. the honor of, um, you know, spending some time with her. And, oh, my God. Yeah, so... R.I.P. Yeah, I danced Rest with her a couple of yeah. times. She liked to dance. Oh, yeah. yeah, she was a flirt. She got a flirt <laughs> oh, on. Yes, <laughs> baby. She like, got age her. was really nothing but a number to she her. She got her flirt <laughs> on, definitely. But um, again, tonight's topic is colorism, internalized racism. And um, it's this, this right here. It's basically um, our black community, uh, our, the black American culture, um, being called red bone is considered a compliment while being called dark skin is considered derogatory. And unfortunately, skin color plays a huge role in the concept of beauty. And we see it all the time we do. in media, we in do. videos, even in the experiment with um, the little girl. Remember we was talking about the little girl where they show her the black doll and the, the white yes. golf doll. Mm -hmm. And she says that the white doll is um, pretty and she thinks she's ugly because she's dark skin. Because she's dark, yes. So, and I guess a good example of this, um, if people are a little confused because they sometimes be like, oh, what are they talking about? Um, it's school days, Spike Lee, school yeah. days with the, the uh, Jigaboos. And what was the other ones? The Jigaboos was the dark skin. What was the light skin group? I, I can't don't remember. remember what they were called, but... I can't remember the light skin ones. They never got along because they... Yeah, because the, of the skin the complexion. The were ugly. Right, the jiggle, you know. but then the other ones I can't think of because the sorority. It was some type of soror sorority. Yeah, it was sorority, but yeah. they had weave, and I just realized, and I didn't didn't realize until I was looking at school days, like, oh my God, they had weave back then because you know that was not <laughs> Tisha Campbell's hair. She was that Tisha have, Campbell? That was Tisha Campbell, and it was a bad weave. Yeah, it was a when bad weave, and then and she had it, it blonde. I was like. It okay. was blonde and it was bad. It was mm -hmm. nappy. Then she was like throwing it over her shoulder. But I don't know. Uh, Brittany over there trying to Google to see what. <laughs> <laughs> well, because it's she fine. was light, but we do need to it was know. okay. Yeah, we need to know what the name of the light skin group was. Yeah, you know? that's what I'm trying to look right now. I just I'm remember like... the Jigaboos. <laughs> uh, if you look up um, the trailer where they sing it, it'll, it'll say what it is. Because, you know, when they're in the salon and they 
um mm -hmm. doing a little singing uh yeah and i really don't really get into musicals but i really like enjoy school days i guess because of the message behind it yeah but spy lee is kind of like out there now because i'm really not feeling the fact that he made a movie about my city shy town and don't the know city, nothing about it don't know nothing about it nothing about it but, yeah uh, i'm gonna turn this mic over to uh gina here and let her talk about her experience as a dark beautiful woman i i've experienced it a lot of people attack my skin color um when they're mad at me they go you're black you're ugly um you know i grew up with that and even with um walking me and my cousin we were um she's light she's light and we work together. So I, I can remember walking down the street and both of us together and a lot of people would hit on her. They would choose her. But when I'm by myself, it was like, then I would get the attention. It's like I'm their second choice when I'm standing next to a light skinned woman. I was trying to date a woman who told me, you know, I don't date chocolate girls but you're pretty to be chocolate well, what 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 is that you know i think yeah, it's an I insult under, i never understood that either oh she's cute for a dark-skinned girl yeah oh. i never understood where that why yeah, I, and then they was like well then don't take it offensive because my mom is dark-skinned what do you you sound well, like an idiot to me even stupider that yeah like oh well i don't date but my mom's dark skin like so you don't like your mom so you think your mom's ugly Is that right so i can't be pretty because i'm dark i didn't get it and then i don't i never had real real long hair but i had shoulder length and people would pull it is that a weed well, so dark skin women can't have long hair either yeah they will pull Yo. it yeah they would pull it and i think i started wearing my hair short just to not be like why are you pulling on my hair so i think that gave me more of a complex than anything dark-skinned people can't be beautiful and we can't have long hair which we can and i think my complexion is very beautiful i think dark is exotic i really do i think dark-skinned models are very exotic you know now they got it where now a lot of people now um heterosexuals I think Morris Chestnut and Edia, what's his name? Idris Elba. Yes, ah, they've yeah. put dark Idris. on the map. I think Gabrielle Union. Well, dark skinned men been in since Wesley Snipes, though. Like, well, yeah, that's been true. In since like the nineties. Like, that's true. <laughs> you know, that's true. But you know, they've they're bringing it back. But I guess your choice is your choice. But growing up, being dark was not acceptable. It was considered your child is ugly. If the child was a certain complexion, not the in between, but the dark, wow. and I've experienced that a lot. Yes, growing up in you, you grew up in Chicago, mm -hmm. so growing in Chicago, it was still that complex. It of, was still that complex. Yep. Wow, that's mm -hmm. crazy. See, yeah, I didn't, I didn't have that experience as far as that. Like, I actually got as a child. Most of the time, I, in my family, like I said, I'm one of the darker ones in my family, but I'm not. Wow. Like, so I, I, I got a complex about, oh, well, you're, you're stuck up, you're this, you're that. So I wasn't, um, to the black friends that I did have, I wasn't black enough because of my light skin and, yeah. and the fact that I did speak a different language and a lot of things. So I, I was always like looked at as in, oh, well, you think you're better than us. And I'm like, no, we're, we're the same. But I was always looked at as in, oh, well, I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to be your friend because you, you're be you think you're better than me. You know, <laughs> right. you're stuck up, you know, you got light skin problems. Like you don't be texting back because that's a light skin thing. Like I, that's what I used to get like all the time. You know what? I hear a lot of um, multi, uh, multiracial people say that they, even reading about the stars, whatever, that are biracial, say that they've had problems. They wasn't black enough, you know, or they wasn't white enough, the acceptance. But I just think the dark skinned children, the beautiful dark skinned children, really grow up with a complex because. It doesn't matter. They don't think they're beautiful. They choose, like she said, the white doll, the lighter dolls 
over the dark dolls. The dark dolls are not beautiful, so they don't see themselves as beautiful. But I think that also goes back to representation in the media as well, because you, yes. you understand, like with Barbie and everything else like that. Barbie recently started getting like melanated dolls. Yeah. So you mean when you grow up uh, on TV, you see white kids in the really good roles where they're the hero and everything else is good. Then you got Barbie over here that you're buying and you're playing with, and you're constantly being fed this light is right image, then of course you have that confidence against yourself because you don't see yourself and recognize mm-hmm. yourself in, in those positions where it's like, wow, you know, I could do this too. Right. And, and you can see on commercials, a lot of the children are what? Biracial. Racially ambiguous. They're yes. biracial. Like I mean, they'll are. throw us in, they'll throw some little dark kid in there just to keep it, the, the profile down. But the majority of the commercials and they're doing a family part, the kids are biracial. Right, and even Mm -hmm. just in in media. Yeah, I agree with Gina. Stuff like that, and black media, even in our own movies and stuff, how Mm -hmm. Spike Lee is actually really good for doing that, Um, but how they cast, like, with the two women, Tisha Campbell and Pam, they were casting that with the Martin series. You got Tisha Campbell, who is the light-skinned, she's the pretty one, she's nice she's sweet she's this and that and then you got, got the dark better skin. job right better job but then you got pam who's dark skinned she's loud she's put cast as this ghetto ratchet loud person with this ugly attitude and everything uh-huh. based upon and in the movies and uh, shows is so true i didn't even think that about that about they, martin. They constantly i didn't think of it even till she said it they constantly even though when do i that. look at martin if i had to choose what well, martin well they said originally when they did that show they switched them around. Gina was supposed to be the friend, and um, Pam. Pam was supposed to be the girlfriend. But I guess they um, energy as far as them to cracking on each other and the jokes was better. Mm-hmm. But I never really looked at it like that because me personally, I like Pam. Better. I did too. <laughs> I like but Pam. She, Pam had uh, the better body too, girl. Right, she did. <laughs> yes. That's the aesthetic and the narrative they push. Light skin is again the light skin girls always yeah. the nicer one with the better job and she's sweeter and this and that. And if she and and like, if you think about it, every movie that you see where you have that pairing of two women, you always have a light-skinned one you always have a dark-skinned one and in yeah. every time in that movie the light-skinned girl has a better advantage over the dark-skinned girl for whatever reason yeah it's it's like in the in the um the cosby show yeah. i could never understand how they picked the children oh yeah that was i never story, understood though. that because you had rudy mm-hmm. and and what malcolm, malcolm and the other yeah. the other Jamal, yeah. they were yeah. dark but then you came with these two very uh, light Lisa, skin. The biracial kids. Yeah, so yeah. where did that come from? Because Felicia was, Rashad was not that light. No, and both of the older daughters were biracial. Yes. Yeah. I never understood how they picked that. Well, I mean, you know, as black women, we can have children of all, you know. We could. Yeah, we but, could. Maybe that's yeah, the, the. Both but, of them were straight up black, and it was yeah. very obvious that them two oldest <laughs> ones was biracial. <laughs> right. So Claire must have been, you know. But we're not going to talk about that. But the, 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 the light one had what? Maybe huh? she cheated. Maybe them one his kids, and they just didn't let that out. <laughs> right. right. You, know what? you know, maybe them two had a different baby dad. Right. <laughs> right, right. But I think we have we have to learn that we have to learn and teach our kids that it doesn't matter your skin tone. You're all beautiful. Absolutely. You know, you absolutely. All are beautiful, but we need to start putting that out there and having more of the darker kids model. Right. And when we did find one, he in a monkey shirt. So right. <laughs> Because he's a very beautiful yeah, little boy. Right. He's oh. so pretty. But so then nice. he's just like in a monkey shirt. And, just, and, and I, do, I do believe that, of course, because they don't have anything outside of the home to see, I do believe that it starts in the home. Because you do have, and I've had this in my family as well, where you have family members that will be like, oh, well, you're dark, you know what I'm saying? And they'll favor certain children based upon how they look. Like, I'm not going to lie, and I'm probably putting my family tea out there, but on my dad's side, mm-hmm. my grandmother, his grandmother, my great-grandmother, she loved me and my sister. She didn't really jive too well with the rest of my cousins, <laughs> but she loved me and my sister. And I remember distinctly because of 
not solely because of the way we look, but how we were acting, how we were taught. Mm -hmm. So she clearly favored us over the two. And one of my cousins actually made that comment was like, well, that's because y'all, you know, y'all got the pretty eyes and this and that. They made, she, she did that. And, and it was something that she grew up in Alabama. So she was raised in, in that era during the Jim Crow segregation and all that other stuff. So, mm -hmm. you know, that's something that she was saw every day. She didn't see herself, you know. So innately, that was something that was kind of inbred in her a little bit. So, like, my, I have a baby sister. She's, we're like 21 years apart. She's my wow. baby sister. And every day, she's a same complexion as you. And I tell her every day, like, yes. you are beautiful. Like, you are beautiful. Don't let anybody tell you you're not. You are gorgeous. You know what? My son, the 11 year old, he's dark like me. And, and, and I think people tell him, uh, people told me he's so handsome to not be mixed. Huh? I, yes, I've had people tell me that about Keontae. He is, he is oh, handsome. What do he, why do he have to be? That's mixed? what I'm saying. This is what's in he our culture. Gorgeous. Our culture. And he loves women, so he, yeah, he's he going to make some woman <laughs> very happy. Wife. Yes, I've heard people yes. tell me. People have told me that, say, for him to be, he's so pretty to not be mixed. Like I can't, couldn't have a damn pretty baby. Right. I told you that that one guy. He he was really adamant. He did not believe I was completely black. He was like, "You can't be black because black." Women I don't, don't understand look like where you. he got. See what I'm saying? And I was like, "Dude, you sound super ignorant. If that was your shot, you just lost. Like like if that was you trying to shoot your shot, you just definitely break." I just think if you're dark, you're beautiful. It doesn't matter the complexion. He, all of us, all African Americans, all of us are beautiful in our own way. Yes, 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 you're live with LE Radio, and we're back. We had to take a quick little break, get that intro going so y'all could know. Well, I'm quite sure y'all already know who Jessica is, but that, <laughs> that was just a little background, a little, um, a little background there. So back for this hour, uh, she's going to be our special guest, and Brittany is still here, unfortunately. Uh, Gina had to leave us. <laughs> yeah, she had to leave That's us, okay. but it, okay. It, it's okay. She'll be back with us next Sunday. She'll be back with us next Sunday, people. Absolutely, absolutely. So uh, without further ado, as you heard um, with the absolutely amazing um, Presentation, okay. Um, absolutely, um, presentation. We have the absolutely amazingly talented, wonderful Jessica Halter here. Hello, how are you? Hey guys, how y'all doing? Doing good, doing good. So, <laughs> we were with the mics and stuff. So, no, it's no technical dip, it, it stayed okay. clear. Okay, all right. So, now when we go through, I, I just had a few questions it's about like. Because twenty three, like twenty three years, that is an amazing like yeah. record, like career wise of doing something that you obviously love. Yeah. Because um, I mean, obviously, you wouldn't be doing it that long if you didn't love it. So, yeah. um, so I just had a few questions about what what was the catalyst or what inspired you to do this work that you do. Um. So I've been writing my whole life. I mm -hmm. never wanted to do anything but write my whole life and I started using writing to kind of do some self healing Right. and there was an article I did a long time ago in high school mm -hmm. that um, was about date rape mm -hmm. and all these girls came to me like when they read the article and I just really learned what it was to have the power of the pen right at your beck and call just to be <laughs> like so I started using it to heal myself and later to heal other people and so when AIDS really presented itself as a problem for African American women right. is when I started the Punani project okay. and I, I started it after Easy E announced that he had AIDS right right and then um like uh we worked on the music part of it mm -hmm. it was a book called Punani, the hip-hop songs. Right. And then my friend Dwayne, um, <laughs> I think you were playing him on the intro. Right. Yeah. Um, 
he came to my writing class and he was like, this is amazing, Jessica. You should do a book and let me do the soundtrack. I'm like, a soundtrack to a book? He's yeah. like, hell yeah. <laughs> I'm like, but this is a long time ago now. Right. A long time ago. And uh, poetry really, I mean, we had The Last Poets mm-hmm. and a few other things, but not really, it, it wasn't really in the mainstream like that. Got it was it. something that we did in uh, this spot in San Francisco called The Upper Room. Mm. Um that's where I met Tracy Bartlow and yes. some of the other talents that I use for the HBO segment. Wow. But to bring sexuality mm-hmm. to the platform of poetry was unheard of at the time. And it considered very disrespectful to the Very art. disrespectful. Yeah. So you were kind of like pioneering this whole oh, thing. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Awesome. We are pioneers of, <laughs> of erotic entertainment in this form, but also for free form conversation about black sexuality, which, right. you know, was not happening at the time and still we talk about sex without talking about sexual healing right so this project is a conversation an adult conversation with audience interaction and participation (laughs) and everything it's fun it's you know will open your mind and your body at the same time um in a way that just isn't done anywhere else even today right with scores of people all over the world like doing erotic poetry or their right. idea of what erotic poetry is, um, they miss that. Mm-hmm. They miss that point. And um, I guess, you know, because this really does come from a place of love. It comes from a place of of understanding about, right. not just about what we are doing in our daily lives and the fact, you know, that AIDS is a real problem. Right. But it points to the bigger issue of dishonesty mm-hmm. dishonesty between couples and dishonesty uh between people and themselves right you exactly we, we lie to ourselves a lot about what we are who we are and what, what we, we are like. capable of right yeah absolutely that's amazing so so when you started this it, it was kind of like self-healing and then it, it manifested into healing others yes that's awesome so how did the real sex because like i said every time i mention your name in the penalty poets everybody's like oh for hbo hbo so how did that opportunity present itself to you yeah um well like i said we, we had already been working on an album mm-hmm. um to go with it so i i was a hip-hop entertainment journalist at the time right and um Let's see. I think the source printed an article about the Punani Project and Rap Pages printed an article. And so I had a little bit, you know, a little bit of leverage there. And then Dwayne, you know, is very famous (laughs) (laughs) from Tony, Tony, Tony. So adding his name to it. And he even has a poem in my book about, about, uh, can I say Jack and all? Yeah, you can say Jack and all. (laughs) Masturbation, yes. Yeah, he's like, he's like, Jessica, masturbation is safe sex. You got to put it in there. Right. Like, okay. <laughs> so um, it was, you know, it was, it was a great collaboration right. of um, different talents. So it was kind of easy to get attention for it. You know, I had Dwayne from Tony, 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 and um, Souls of Mischief, right, and um, of Conscious Daughters, yes, R.I.P. Awesome. Yeah, and. Um, a lot of people just participated in it. Mm-hmm. Um, Money B, Digital Underground. So when I started sending my <laughs> press releases out, you mm-hmm. know, trying to get support or whatever, you know, it was pretty easy. So Tracy Barlow's sister came to a show nice. and she was on tour with Bringing the Noise, Bringing the Funk. Right. And, she, and, you know, I really wanted to go on tour with this <laughs> thing because I, I had published a book and mm-hmm. I didn't know how to sell it. I was like, okay, I got this book. I couldn't get it in any stores. Right. It was like, you know, right. they, they considered it pornography. Right. Um, and so um, Tracy's sister came to the show and liked it and was like, let me send this book to HBO Real Sex. I'm like, real sex? Right. That's nasty. Because <laughs> I'm delusional about right. how sexual the Punani Project is. Mm-hmm. Like, I would get highly offended mm-hmm. when people say, you know, <laughs> right. oh, that's so over the top. And I'm like, what? I don't understand. Like, what are you right. talking like, really? And it's 23 years later, and I still, like, I'm so <laughs> sensitive about it. Right. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, she, want, she wanted to propose it to um, HBO's Real Sex, and I, I reluctantly agreed. They were interested. Oh. And at first I told them no. Right. I was scared. I was a wife and oh. somebody's mama. <laughs> <laughs> right. 
<laughs> right. <laughs> but it was the best decision I could have ever made. Like, I had no idea. And they told me that. They said, you have no idea how big, how this, big gonna this is going to be. And I was right. just like, you know, y'all were talking earlier about black people and how we stand in our own way. Mm-hmm. I like in the, this experience that I had to what y'all were talking about earlier where, you know, we come in and we tear down our own communities and mm-hmm. that type of thing. You need to feel that something belongs to you to be able to respect it. That ownership. Yes. Ownership. So when people say, oh, black people are tearing up their own community or whatever, you don't own that. Right. It is um, easy then to lash out and to, you know, it's almost like kicking the person's ass who has the best clothes in class. Like (laughs) part of it is about yourself too. Right. You know, you're just unleashing and yeah and finally you can scream because we live these lives that don't allow us to scream they don't allow us to be honest they require us to wear a different face and use a different tone in our voice when we move in circles that do not belong to us right so you know those moments are to be expected and likewise with the punani project right i try to remind people that pussy is yours right you know, that is yours. That is your responsibility. It is your obligation to take care of it. Right. And that is what this conversation is about. So, yes, it's about sex and it's titillating and stimulating and all mm-hmm. that. But it is a reminder about your power, you right. know, the power of your sexual energy and how we are all connected through our energy and through our bodies so that what we do affects the next person. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. So how did you develop the name Punani Pose? Like how did, how did the name and titling of that come about? Well, obviously I didn't make up the word Punani. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but when I was in college at Howard, mm-hmm. I dated this guy briefly mm-hmm. who, um, Used to say the word all the time, like, Mm -hmm. you know, that's what he called women's body parts. Right. And I thought, I had never heard the word before, you know, Mm -hmm. I'm from Oakland. Right. (laughs) Not a lot of, you know, Jamaicans there or whatever, but my father is Jamaican. Mm -hmm. Um, So I'm Jamaican lineage, but not by culture at all, because I don't know him or anything. I grew up in foster care. But um, just having that little knowledge, you know, and hearing that word for the first time, Mm -hmm. Punani. (laughs) <laughs> oh, it sounded so pretty. Right, it just so good, pretty. Rolling off the tongue. So Sounds it just nice. made sense <laughs> when I conceived the Punani Project mm-hmm. to use a word that was as in your face and as bold as hip hop music had become. Right. It was a time um, when sexuality, black female sexuality was being dragged through the mud. Like now yeah. we look at it and it's so common for someone your age to, mm-hmm. to say, oh yeah, you know, ratchetry is just part of our existence. There was a time when that was not the case. Really? There was a time where w- women crossed their legs at the ankle mm-hmm. and carried themselves a certain way. Right. Know? Um, and yeah, we always had loose life women or whatever, but it, was like it wasn't celebrated thing, right? as a culture. It was something naughty and private, right? you know, um, and all of a sudden we went from our music went from, Ooh, baby, baby, I'll drink your bath water, to, <laughs> you know, I'll nut right. on your face. Right. I mean, <laughs> just crazy. <laughs> Absolutely crazy. So I thought, you know, I'll do a project that is as bold Mm -hmm. sexually as hip hop music has become, Mm -hmm. but put a little class on the ass. Right. You know, just put put the panties up just a little bit. Um, So, yeah. Yeah. That's right. So, in in all of the dealings that you had um, in touring, because like I said, 23 years is a long time. And what was there ever a moment at the beginning, um, and it could be before or even after the HBO Real Sex, where there was a time where you just was like, okay, um, I can't do this anymore. Like, was there, did you ever get to that point, you know, when a lot of people start projects that are passion projects, sometimes they kind of hit a wall. So did you ever get to that point at all? No, I love the Punani Project with my whole heart. 
I feel like it is my family. Right. I raised this project right next to my son. Mm-hmm. I got pregnant with him at my first Punani party. Really? Yes. Wow. So I had my Punani project and my mm-hmm. child, <laughs> and it was my life. And my grind has been, you know, not about the thing that keeps me going mm-hmm. is that, um, first of all, I love the people. I love the clients. Like, they are freaking amazing. Right. This project has developed over the years from just a, a book to many books. I think I have, like, 12 right. and all that. But they contain stories and um, emails, even, that I've gotten <laughs> from clients over the years. You know, I've seen couples come And I've seen them come back as singles, broken up, and come back again with a new husband or a new (laughs) wife. Like, (laughs) I know these people. Like, Pumani fans are amazing. Um, So they they have really been, you know, what what has uh, kept me going. But also, I wasn't looking. There was no, like, ultimate goal Mm -hmm. as far as, like, I'm not a, a rap group. Right. Oh, <laughs> this is, you know, I tell people all the time, this ain't the five heartbeats. Like, <laughs> this is a theater company. It's a right. movement. It's a project. So people come, they go, mm-hmm. they learn, they move on, they have a great time. They might have a rough time. Or, right. you know, I'm a slave driver. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> it's really bad sometimes. Or, you know, I'll be taking it so serious. But um, the goal has been to continue. Right. That is that is the goal. There's not like, oh, I want to be famous and make a billion dollars and then I'll retire right. on a beach somewhere. Right. I haven't gotten to that place. I, and that was never anything that I set forward. So every time I have a successful show, every time I get a great email or mm-hmm. text message from somebody who is satisfied right. with what I've done, that is another goal reached. So, yep, yep. It's important to have goals and we're going to take a quick break and play some of her um, pieces. This is called My Fuck. And we'll be right back after this break. The night has stolen your sleep. It's morning. Sister, you look kind of tight. Is that the weight of the world you're wearing? Take it off. Take it all off. Don't watch the clock. We will set time off course. Let me slide some oil down the curve of your mind and find heaven amidst your forsaken dreams for family, for labor, for life. We will take time to love. We will take time to give. Take the time to chill. We will take time and bend her selfishness to our will. There is no night, no noon, no day, no seconds, no minutes, no hours, only us. Objects of two souls' desires. There will be no protection necessary as we will neither kiss nor lick, nor suck. My desire is to become infected with your story, your energy, your love. Tonight, my darling, we will mind fuck. Tell me your fears. Tell me of your heaviness. Speak to me of your passion. Reveal to me your heart. And if you feel the need to cry, let the wetness flow upon my strong hands, for I am more than your lover. I am your man. And when time finds her way back to the world, our minds will be climaxing. Poonanny love. Every day is Valentine's Day. Pooh Nanny love. Bring a lover, some friends, and come on out to play. Order tickets on your cell phone. Learn a few tricks you can take home. The perfect date night. Ooh, Pooh Nanny love.com. You're live with LE Radio Entourage. Yes, yes, yes. Make sure y'all get those tickets. You know, Brittany gave that LE. Event Blackboard list earlier. You could get those tickets on Eventbrite. 
or you could go on Facebook to the Punani Poets and get it. Uh, follow on IG. It's on my page. You could go to um, W. Well, I guess all them W's. You could go to LERadio.org <laughs> and um, click on Punani Poets and uh, yeah, get those tickets. Make sure y'all get those tickets early. People wait till the last minute. They sell out quickly. People do not go on those Facebook numbers and think it's tickets because a lot of people that attend these shows or attend any other event, in reality, they don't really say on Facebook, I'm going. Because sometimes people don't want people to know their business and their every move and what they doing <laughs> or what they planning. So don't be fooled by those numbers because I had so many people um, last year when we did the first Secret of Pearl here in Atlanta the day before, you cannot pay at the doors, at the rush center and all that. All ticket sales are in advance. But they waited till the last minute, and then a couple of people was like, oh, well, on Facebook, you cannot go by that number. Because, again, you know, some people want privacy. They might not want you to know where they at or what they doing. They have stalkers <laughs> and groupies right. and stuff like that. So don't go off of that number. Make sure you get those tickets ASAP. Don't wait till the last minute. No, you cannot pay at the door. No, um, VIP sell out really quick. We got a couple passes, group rates, everything. But like I said, get those tickets ASAP. Um, all the information you need is at punanilove.com. It's punanilove.com, right? Punani <laughs> is at punanilove.com. Um, and so we're going to go ahead on and get back into this um, interview. All right. So I, I want to talk some more about the shows now because we, we have three shows. We have The Secret of the Pearl. Mm -hmm. We also have a School of Seduction. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, we have your show, The Head Doctor Show. So could you kind of give us like a little feel of each show and like because obviously all three of them are different they in, are. in their own unique way. They are different. And um, well, this year we have some amazing talent. Mm -hmm. um, every year I try some you know, new people and new ideas to add to the show. Um, so this year, with the first show that will be coming to Atlanta on Valentine's Day at the Rush Center, it is School of Seduction with Maha Adachi Earth. Yes. She, I met her <laughs> last year. <laughs> yeah, I met her last year at um, a show we did with, with Jill Scott. Okay. Oh man, she blew my I hair back. I was like, wow, <laughs> like she is such a talented poet. She mm -hmm. also sings. Yeah. She is beautiful and she is a Scorpio. So right. like, what? <laughs> <laughs> right. But she's also And what that means. <laughs> <laughs> so she she um is also a, a very happy wife. Right. And and mom of three children and I thought wow you know I really would like very much to focus this year put, shift some of my energy for that show right. towards the wives the women who are underappreciated for all of the many right. things that they do <laughs> all of the hats that you wear sisters I got you right <laughs> okay this show is fun the show mm -hmm. is designed for committed couples, for people who, you know, have put it all on the line and said, yes. you know, I'm here for the long haul. This is a chance for you to just let your hair down and have a great time. It's interactive, mm -hmm. heavy with comedy. It actually debuts in Virginia on um, February 13th right. at the Funny Bone. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it, it's <laughs> comedy for real. <laughs> but there's audience interaction portions of the show. We have mm -hmm. a scramble board for naughty words. Whoa. We have kissing competition and nice. love confessions and uh, BDSM and mm, right. <laughs> all kinds of, yeah, okay. really <laughs> nice, fun games that appear um, as part of a larger production that includes poetry, right. dance, and music. So um, that's going to be on, on Wednesday, on Valentine's Day. Right. And then on um, Saturday, well, Friday and Saturday, Friday in Macon mm -hmm. and Saturday here in Atlanta, also at the Rush Center, is our lesbian show. It is our um, second season in a row okay. for that show. It started a few years back, though, excuse me, <clears throat> with um, Love the Poet, right. who is the headliner of that show. Love mm -hmm. hails from Baltimore, Maryland, and um, helped me to create this show for exclusively for, for women because right. 
we were doing a lot of shows and the more popular the Punani poets got, the more, you, you know, because it is very female empowering. So right. it's going to invite lesbian women. Um, I'm a feminist all right. the way. <laughs> so we have a, we had a, a fan base that wasn't having their personal needs being addressed 100 Right. percent of the time during the show like I've always had lesbian artists in the show even when I did real sex I right. had a, a girl um who was with us for a long time named uh, Lucky Seven she okay. she did the cucumber cucumber yeah, cucumber I yeah that one. so we always have a slot in the mm-hmm. show for a lesbian always a slot for a big girl always mm-hmm. a slot for a fast girl right. <laughs> always a slot for one, at least one dude you right. know I have a little formula it's cookie cutter right but I try to um create my show so that someone will represent everyone, everyone yeah. in the audience, right? So I try to do it like that. But um it got to where our show, especially in Atlanta and DC, was almost half and half. Half straight people, half lesbian people. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so two years ago we decided, you know, I need to do a show mm. that is just for so we came up with Secret of the Pro, like we brought it back from like the archives of right. <laughs> our Punani vault <laughs> and um, added a few um, changes to it. So it is the only show that we have that is live, is backed by a live band. Oh, okay. It's musically based with a lead singer whose name is Karis Love Child. She okay. started as our intern last year and now is um, co headlining with Love. Well, Love is the headlining poet. Right. And also, um, we have dance in that show mm-hmm. as well and audience interaction right. as well. And the main difference is that it's live music and it's an all female cast. Got it. Uh-huh. Nice. Yeah. So, you know, the hair doctor is my show. Of course. Now <laughs> the hair doctor, that that's not for novices. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's, that's no, that's for people who, who, already have the basics down right like they already know who they love who they want what they want to do they already right. focused right. they got the eye on the prize and they just trying to fine tune it right a little okay. bit okay you know it's the show you come to to develop your skills right. especially in the area of oral okay not just oral sex but communication Oral communication. Anyone who knows anything knows that nothing is done without communicating. Absolutely. <laughs> you have <laughs> right. to communicate. And I think a lot of us, we go into relationships with old tricks from old lovers' mm. past, and we think oh, it's going to work. One so, size fit all type mm, deal. Mm. What is very unique about the Head Doctor show is that it starts with a Q&A. People actually write down their sex questions, okay. ideas, things like that. And we spend about half an hour to 45 minutes before the show going through these questions. Oh, and it's yeah. amazing because it teaches me what the people who are in the room care about. Right. So I try to make sure that we have material that covers pretty much everything. Right. <laughs> um, just in case we get something, you know, um, my show is very flexible. Mm-hmm. In terms of production, it's only lightly scripted. Right. Like, the poems, obviously, are scripted. Right. Um, but I leave a lot of room for improv, natural improv. So it is best described as reality theater. Right. Because I remember, I remember going to that show, and it was interesting during the QA part how the first show, we went, a lot of the questions was around squirting. I remember that was, like, a big question there. And then, like, another one, anal, was mm-hmm. another big question. So... Yeah, I understand how that is like how like yeah. how that was like freely scripted there, mm-hmm. so you can kind of take care of everyone's needs. It's it's very loose, and then you know if if something really seems to um, take a turn, like some some things are really intense, and you can feel the room shift. Right. Um, mentally, you can feel people shift to where. Uh, if the Q&A is done, I can tell if people still want more on that topic. Right. In that case, I might add a poem about the power of the prostate if right. they've been asking a lot of questions about anal, you see? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So there's a lot of flexibility. It's a lot of fun. But like I said, it's not for punks. Not for the faint of Don't heart. Don't come if you're scared. <laughs> You know what I mean? Don't come if you're scared. Not to the head doctor show, but you can mm. go to School of Seduction because that is the ABCs of love. It's one, two, three. Let's kiss in public. Yay. Yeah. Cute. <laughs> <laughs> right. You don't have to be scared to come to that one. There's no real sex type right. stuff happening at that show. But yeah. um, the head doctor, yeah. 
<laughs> you know. Yeah, come with the A game for the head doctor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's not, so in, in your different shows, I know you probably you can't just not really fair to pick a favorite part, but what are some of your favorite like sections or moments deal, dealing with your shows and interacting with the audience? I absolutely love the um love confessions. Mm-hmm. Um it's my favorite part. A lot of people, a lot of people love the kissing competition. Yeah, because it's fun, right? <laughs> and hype, and, right. and people really get serious about that kissing oh, man, competition. Yeah. Man, they be competing. Too, like. <laughs> we we right. had to make a new rule where you had to keep your feet on the floor. Right, <laughs> it was getting crazy. Right, yeah, they be getting intense. Yeah. I love the kiss. I like the love confession. But I, I really love the kissing competition. Mm-hmm. I love, I, I like the love confessions. It's something for, so for people who know me, who follow me as Jessica Holter or mm-hmm. Ghetto Girl Blue, yeah. I'm affectionately known as How you come Ghetto up with Girl that now? <laughs> Somebody kind of gave it to me a little bit. I used to perform at this place called The Blue Candle in Oakland. And oh, okay. I, I was just going as Jessica Holter and the guy um, who was in charge the MC of talent, yeah, but also casting people like uh-huh. get, like choosing people or whatever. <laughs> His name was Jay Crow. He was on my real sex segment actually. Oh, okay. he dope too. Too. Um, he said, "You need a name. You need a stage name." I'm tired of saying <laughs> yeah. So he kind of put the pressure on me to come up with one, and he was like, "Well, you do this and you do that." So I kind of came up with it. You know, I was really I, I spent a lot of was time. Was you ghetto? Am I ghetto? Was you then? Because if you say ghetto girl blue, they think of like a hood chick. Oh, I'm a hood chick. All right. Oh, make no mm-hmm. mistake about it. Okay. Don't let the light <laughs> skin no, fool you. <laughs> what y'all think they got light skin people? Right. Yeah, don't uh-huh. let the light, <laughs> light skin back. <laughs> light skin. Obama brought light skin back. Right. They say Drake did. <laughs> Drake was supposed to um, yeah. bring light skin back. But yeah. No, no, no. I'm, I'm from East Oakland, California. Right. So, yes, the ghetto stands for East Oakland, California. Oh, okay. So, you yeah. Get I down. rep my hood too. I rep right. it. Oh, right. Right. No shame. No shame shame at all. I love Oakland. Oakland made me who I am. I am an emotional thug right. because of how I grew up and I take a lot of pride in it. And the fact that I am from Oakland, Oakland is a, a place of revolution. Mm-hmm. Oakland is a place that believes in change and believes in the power of the community and the power Absolutely. of the of the word. Right. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You know, the Bible says in the beginning was the word right. and the word was with God. And the word was God. See, the word, the words that you say, the words that you write, the words you communicate to people become their God. It defines who they are. It defines what they believe, what they think. If there were no words, no stories to be told, you wouldn't know anything. Right. Hell, we only know we were slaves because they told us we were and we read it in a book. Right. You don't really know that. Think about it. That's true. You don't know any of that. You don't know Jesus. You don't know moments. God. You don't know. Yeah, these are I, words. I kind of These are, wonder that too. Like g- the gods of the world yeah, are the writers this, of the this. world. Yes. The people who write history are the gods of the world. Mm. And the the more people turn away from the church, the more people turn um, their focus to self in the way that we've been focusing on self in a real negative way, the more mm-hmm. dangerous things are. Right. You know, the idea of of God, whether you believe it or not, you know, you, you could believe in God or not believe in God, but the idea that there is a, a higher force right. keeps people in line, keeps mm-hmm. people in control, keeps people doing the right thing. Right. Otherwise, people be shooting people in the face, walking down the street. Right. Even our laws are based on words written in a book. Thousands of years ago. Right. It is amazing. Mm-hmm. Right? The power of words. This right. is just freaking incredible. But coming from Oakland, I understand that. Because I saw change. Like, I saw right. as a kid, you know, the Black Panthers were making a real difference. Right. They had to bring the troops in and take them down because those yeah. the power of their words changed my life. Exactly. Made me feel that I was worthy. That black is beautiful. Right. We, we talked about that the other day, you know. Yeah. Just the image of the black woman 
was uplifted in the 70s. Right. You know, it wasn't a, a black household you could go into, didn't have one of them <laughs> beautiful the velvet, velvet yeah. posters of, <laughs> of the, the Black Panthers and all yeah. that. I grew up watching that. I love black women. Mm-hmm. This this project is in a service to those black women, the black women who raised me right. in the hood. So, yes, yeah. Ghetto Girl Blue. Ghetto Girl Blue. You know, I but I grew that. up in foster care, so I, I spent a lot of time, you know, sad and mm-hmm. lonely and things and having to build a family of my own, which right. is what the Punani Project has become. You know, okay. the women involved in it and people who support it have become my extended family. Absolutely. So that's where the blue part comes from, just spending a lot of time feeling sad. Mm-hmm. Hey, we got a quick question from a, a guest. They want... Uh, I think we did. We mentioned Dallas on that list. Uh, yes, we did. That was the one that Dallas is sold out. However, they're able to get onto the waiting list. They could get on that waiting list. Yes. All righty then. All right. <laughs> so, um, so the love confessions part of it. Could you explain like what what that part is about? Specifically? It's a, it's about that. It's about the power of words. So watching what I watched growing up, mm-hmm. you know. The power of Huey P. Newton to right. turn a crowd with that high ass <laughs> voice. <Right. laughs> um, and my pastor, you mm-hmm. know, Reverend Newton Carey Jr., mm-hmm. he was amazing at True Vine Missionary Baptist Church. All right. Uh, um, was changed. My life was changed there. Right. You know, I went from being a really sad kid to really finding my voice um, at that church. I became a youth evangelist and learned how to do public speaking. I joined Toastmasters um, when I was in junior high school and got all these trophies. Like, my background is in public speaking. Right. And there used to be something we used to do in church. I think they still might still do it. You stand up. The pastor calls for people to make um, testimonies. Yeah, they still do that. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, the lady stand up and she say, honorable pastor. Right. <laughs> first giving honor to God. Right. Right. <laughs> so when I came up with Love Confessions for this show, it, I ripped it straight from the church, mm-hmm. you know, where I watched these people stand up and give praise to God, usually for material things, you know, right. cars and, yeah. um, or delivery from sickness and, you know, magic and stuff right. like that. And I thought, how amazing would it be for these couples to give a love confession to the person that they're sharing their life with? Right. You know? Right. And so in the show, I tell them, I say, you know, you do this for Jesus Mm-hmm. All the time. You never even met him. Right. <laughs> right. Do this for the brother laying next to you. Do this for the sister laying next to you. Right. You know, holding you up. And, um, oh, it caught on fast. I yeah. had no idea. Like, sometimes we have to stop, like, people from coming up. Right. But um, usually we'll take at least three love confessions at a show. And sometimes they are tear jerking. Yeah. Yeah. I do- there was one in particular in... um in New York that stands out in my mind because the couple and they, they come all the time to my show. So, uh, he, they went to, they fell in love in sixth grade. Wow. They fell in love in sixth grade. Sixth grade. Yes. And then they were together for a while. And then as adults, they broke up. They Mm -hmm. each had families, you know, different families. And then they came back together years later and, he had um, fallen victim to drugs, mm. and she nursed him back to health and married that man. Wow. And they combined their families, and mm-hmm. they are still together, and they got to be in their 60s now. Wow. Yeah, it's be- beautiful girl. They tell their story. People be crying. I I'm like, <laughs> it's, like oh it's just so nice. <laughs> yeah. The stories that, that I get to hear. And I, I mean, you know, this work is just good work. It's just right. good work, right? Right. Um, I, I think people might have seen my new ad campaign. It says, uh, the head doctor show, mm-hmm. use your mouth for good. Right. That's what I'm talking about. Right. Love, I'm really talking about love professions. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, um, yeah. 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 See, and, and I think that's, that was awesome. I did get to I'm see sorry, that. I'm sorry. Did you say, how, how did you come up with the head doctor? Did you say that earlier? No. How did I come up with the head doctor? How did you come up with that show? 
Oh, the show itself? Yeah, yeah. the show itself. <laughs> <laughs> um, I had heard the term the head doctor when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. They used to call this girl in my church that. The head doctor. So, uh, and I was like, what a is A girl that? is just one of them stories when they say, my friend, but they're really talking about themselves. <laughs> <laughs> or is this a real friend? She wasn't no, I'm a serious because you know you got those people like my friend. Right, she wasn't for a, a friend. Yeah, right. but they really be for them. But my no. friend, she wasn't a friend. She was a lady at my church, and um, they just used to say, I don't know. But I found out what it was when I was like around in junior high school. That mm. is for girls who like went down on dudes or whatever. Uh, okay. So I always had the name like in the back of my head. I always knew what it was. So um, how do people view that? I as wrote far as your shows like. Well, I wrote a poem called The Head Doctor. Mm-hmm. Um, I wrote that poem. It was the f- it was the first poem I ever wrote outside okay. of school. Right. It was the first poem I wrote for the Punani Project. Okay. And I wrote the poem because I wanted to be able to see if I could write erotica without using any curse words. Okay. The Head Doctor poem has no cuss words in it. You would think it does. Right. It does not. It is an amazing piece. Um, but I wrote the poem specifically so that I could whisper it into people's ears in parking lots when I was trying to convince them to come to my show. Really? Mm-hmm. Wow. So, so when you first started out, you would actually, like, how did that work? Like, Did people I mean, just interpret that? Like, a woman calling herself the head doctor, was it? any backlash for that you know i've had an amazing time of this a lot a lot of the stories especially now like Mm -hmm. they got all these stories about people being you know mistreated right no i'm saying that people assume things because you called yourself this is what i'm saying okay they you know there are all these people saying oh this happens right Mm, i didn't really have much of that there were a couple instances where i thought you know this is a little off color this is you know like a club owner maybe like come to my apartment first or whatever right, that's what i mean but it's never yeah. been a situation where i've never been in a situation that i feel like i would need to go back 30 years later right. and be like you made me feel uncomfortable at right. that interview because like i'm grown mm-hmm. and if you are doing or saying something that's making me feel uncomfortable i'm perfectly capable of letting you know in the moment right that it is a problem i don't think you understood my question <laughs> oh, <laughs> my question is because you call yourself the head doctor did people assume that you was like free like just open like sexually open like just out there i don't know what people's assumptions are i know that i haven't been in oh they never approached you like that i know i have not been uh-huh. in any compromising positions as an okay. adult all uh, abuse okay. i suffered i suffered as a child mm-hmm. from people who were supposed to love me mm-hmm. <laughs> but yeah. as an adult no, nothing I've done mm-hmm. with, for, through, to the Punani Project has put me in any compromising positions, to my knowledge. Okay. Right. Yes. Yeah, that was the question. Mm-hmm. But I'm a thug. Right. Stop <laughs> moving my mic. Right. <laughs> it was falling. <laughs> I'm going to be a thug. You know what I'm saying? I'm, <laughs> too far. I'm sorry. I love it. But, I'm a thug. right. So, so, some of the people want to know if you're going to do any live poetry before we get off of here tonight. Yes, yes. Would oh, you yeah. be able to delight us with that? Awesome. So okay, you ready now? Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. you could go ahead. Did you get me? Or you want to go? Do you want to go to a break first? Yeah, let much. me let the people know where they tuned in to, and then y'all could come back because you know, you know, people, black people anyway, they attention span is short. You ever been in the college class and the professor keep talking, and after a while, you just start dozing. You just started. Yeah. <laughs> You paying attention, but you start to wander off like, oh, uh, one Are of those. Are you saying I sound like a teacher? No, you don't sound like a teacher. <laughs> this is a podcast, and we talk. You do not sound like a teacher. Of, <laughs> Back when I right. was, you know, you know, they call me <laughs> Kettle Girl Blue. You know. Really? Did you know. I tell you? I'm just saying that's how her voice sounds. She asked me, do she sound like a school teacher? I'm marking her right now. <laughs> not a school teacher. Just the teacher. Just or a teacher. teacher with <laughs> Fantasies. You could dress up like a school teacher if you want to. You know, um, classes in section. <laughs> <laughs> school of Seduction is going to open with that song. Really? But, um, open with what? Teach Me Tonight. What? Teach I don't tonight. know what's Teach Me Tonight. It's a song. Yeah. Oh, no. Who made that? I don't know. <laughs> I have no I idea. Maybe Sarah Vaughn. 
I think teach it is me that tonight. Was I have there. no idea. What I'll try that to find is. it on on the break for you. Yeah, because yeah, I have no idea what that is. <laughs> None at all. I'm trying to see what I got over here. Okay, this is one of my little favorite um, pieces of when I really fell in love with your stuff. The housewife experience. You know, fucking for shoes. <laughs> <laughs> You know I love that one. I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> I love it. So we're going to take a quick break and we'll be back with some live poetry. You're tuned in to LE Radio. I'm your host, Don, and I'm joined here tonight with co-host Brittany. That is our program assistant. Again, people, if you want to be a guest on the show, make sure you email Brittany at the show. Yeah, the show at Gmail. The show. <laughs> the show <laughs> Whatever, at don't LE Radio. Thank Don. you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And if you have some music, you can send that to Les Elegance um, Radio at gmail.com. All this information is on our website, leradio.org. Uh, we do fall under the nonprofit Hip Inc. So please become a member of Hip Inc. Go to hipinc.org and sign up. We do have private um, events that are invites only to our members here in our Punani Playhouse. So Make sure you go on in if you want to make a donation, you want a sponsorship, you want to um, be an artist. And, yeah, go on there, hipinc.org. We're going to take this quick break, and then we'll be back with some live poetry with Miss Jessica. Get your music in LE Radio's hottest independent music rotation. Email music at leradio.org. How many married women in here? That's it? Are you fucking kidding me? Ain't nobody married? That's a little, damn. <laughs> How many girlfriends in here? How many of y'all just been with somebody for more than a year? With no marriage plans. I'm gonna hear a woo woo, I can't see you. No, I'm gonna do that again. Let's get our timing right. How many people in here been giving up the pussy for more than a year and ain't got a ring yet. I was a housewife. I mean, I stayed home, I took care of the baby, breastfed, got the stretch. My, I let my mama pick this man for me. She said, he's a good man. That's a good man you got. That man would take care of you even when you ugly and drooling at the mouth. That's a good man. It didn't take me long to realize that it's not much difference between a hoe and a housewife. Cause there I was, all educated and shit, fucking for shoes. Who in love? Every day is Valentine's Day. Put in love. Bring a love for some you. friends and come on out to play. Order tickets on your cell phone. Learn a few tricks you can take home. The perfect date night. Ooh, punanilove.com. Radio, and I'm your host Don, and we're about to get back into this interview with Miss uh, Jessica. I know y'all feeling that beat right there that's inside my little black box, but we're gonna get back in here and let y'all get some live poetry here tonight. Oh, oh, <laughs> y'all want me to do some poetry? Y'all want me to? Uh, Whisper some sweet nothings in your ear and get you to come to my show. <laughs> oh, are you ready over there? You ready? Hey, ladies. Which poem, which poem is that lady of poetry? I can't, I can't even do it. Let me stop it. But yeah, you're tuned in to LE Radio and we have some 
more amazing shows in work for you um, here shortly. We're going to be doing um, Bar Stew Fantasies and Cocktails, Erotic Short Stories for Men and Women by Punani's Lady in Red, DJ Blackman and MT Promises. And that will be coming on Friday nights at 10 p.m. for the open-minded, the freaks, and all of that. So again, I'm your host, Don, and you're tuned in to Ellie Radio. And we're going to get back to this interview with Miss Holter. <laughs> hey, that was a break. We needed a break. We had to take a break, but we are back, people. We are back. Yes, 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 we are back. Go, 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 girl. You ready? All right. So, um, so again, everybody that's tuning in, thank you so much for listening in tonight. Yes, and thank you. you to our amazing guest that we have, Miss Jessica Holter, the founder, the celebrated author, the orator, the founder of the Punani Poets, and just all around amazing individual. Yes. So, <laughs> she go with the, yes, in the background. So, yeah. um, so you're going to bless us with some live poetry tonight. So, what piece yeah. have you chosen? Yeah. Let me see. So, we talked about the head doctor. So, yeah. I'm, I'm going to do the head doctor. And you're going to do the head doctor? You no, know, you said that ain't had no curse. So yeah, do the head doctor. I've never heard you do the head doctor. Mm. Okay. Yeah. That's the very first poem you wrote, right? Uh, I'm messing up your groove right now. <laughs> yeah. you know, when they say respect the mic, I'm supposed to be yeah, quiet yeah, right yeah, now. Yeah, okay, yeah. let me be quiet. She let the artist be, you know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I won't lie. I don't lie. I give good head. And my truth be naked. But protected like the sensual elixir that fills your love glove as I exercise my skills, blessing you with seductive thrills as the pink rose petal lips of my cafe ole with Extra cream skin Whisper Wetness and Repeat rhythms Repeat rhythms to your Proud outward gesture My hands also Know their craft They play your skin flute with a Careful, expert skill, a finely tuned instrument deserves. And this doctor's tongue, like a satin coated honing device, probes beyond your proud outward gesture to that hidden underneath plate. As my long eyelashes give butterfly kisses to your generation sack, I won't lie, I don't lie, I could suck a golf ball through a yard. Of garden hose, what can Punani do for you? They stood there and let you say all that in their ear. Yeah. Mm. Would you stop her if so? Mm-hmm. <laughs> would you no, stop I wouldn't her? stop her. Exactly. I was just wondering. Not, not okay. just random people um, on the street. Like, you said she was in a parking lot. <laughs> well, you know the radio people and stuff. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> the important you, people. Yeah, right. you, you, you didn't Chewy say that. Chewy Gomez and them. Right. Okay. <laughs> Earlier you just said I stood in the parking lot and whispered oh, yeah. this nah, nah, into nah. people's ear to get them to come to my show. So no. I thought you walked up. <laughs> To strangers and random people <laughs> and whispering in their ear, and I was about to say, "You sure that did not get you in trouble? Call yourself the head doctor, then uh, whispering that in their ear." Oh um, yeah, no, there's something about. Let me tell you something. A woman who is 
just brazenly honest with sexuality is less likely to get accosted, molested, and treated badly, I think. Because uh, it's more frightening. Intimidating, yeah. It's, it's more intimidating to right. people. So, I, I mean, nah. Okay. <laughs> when I was a scared little virgin... Yeah, that's when I got molested and raped. Why the virgin got to be scared, though? Because I was a scared little virgin. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just say that because people always be talking, you know, like we was talking about, you pretty for a dark skin girl. Yeah. <laughs> or she a red bone, so she cute. So that was something else that I know people always, they always assume that virgins are scared. Oh, I was scared. Okay, you were scared. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sex still it. scares me, but I have to act like it doesn't. How do Rah! Rah! Right. How do sex scare you? Right. Put on that persona. See my breasts. Go away. (laughs) How do sex scare you? That's like. I think anything that's good and worthwhile should scare you a little bit. Like, I feel like anything, like life in general, should scare you just a little. I don't think it scares you, but I, I do believe that, just speaking from my experience, people, when you do work with the public, and you do stuff in the public, they send to they tend to um picture you a certain way than what you actually are. They um yeah. Yeah. like most people, like you just said you scared of sex or whatever. And um you could be celibate for all we know. But people would think, Oh, she's sexually free, so she's open minded, I could say whatever, I could do whatever that you know you're more comfortable because that's what you do. Because mm-hmm. like I'm always on the radio and I post a lot of stuff on Facebook, but see me, I'm more comfortable talking where in this small space where people can't see me. But if I get into a crowd and it's a bunch of people around me, I tell them, nah, I'm, I'm in retreated off to a, com- a, co- a corner somewhere. I don't do good in the environment of people when too many mm. people is in my space, but people don't know that when they meet me, if I'm, if they see me out somewhere right. and I'm off in the corner, they'll come over or they'll say, I seen you, but I, they mistake it as me being arrogant or stuck up and conceited and don't want to be bothered. Right. But my thing is social anxiety. It's not that, I, <laughs> it's not that I'm stuck up. I'm not arrogant. I'm not conceited, bougie. I'm not none of those things, but it's just a totally different thing. But then if I'm on the phone, I'm on the radio, I'm chill. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. I'm chill, so that's why I was asking you about the the head doctor thing. Like, I'm, I'm yeah, I'm no, chill. I found that um, the more confident I appear, the more in control I am because um, people are. Uh, it pushes people back just a little bit to say, "Oh, wait a minute, who is this person?" Right. You know, who's so proud and bold with these big old breasts, <laughs> talking all this smack. She right. must be somebody to be reckoned with. Right. <laughs> as opposed to, because all my life, like, people put me in the wrong file. Mm. That's people what I was always asking put earlier. Me when, when, when they put me in a the, different the, wrong um, file, though. The, the head doctor in the shows. That's what I was asking, like, what file do you do? I get put, put in a you? different file, I think. Um, what type of file? I think... Um, I, well, y'all were talking about light skin people. Yeah, I get put in the light skin file. Mm-hmm. You are light skin. Yeah, but it's a different light skin <laughs> like, file. Right. Like <laughs> there's a there's a light skin file that is reserved for for people who are like it's almost like a certain group of people think that light skin people are. Um, I want to have the right words. Like get benefit. No, like or, the equivalent of a dumb blonde. Oh, oh stupid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. She said, oh, stupid. Yeah, yeah well, not well, so much yeah. stupid, yeah. but like, yeah, they, I, yeah. They're like Grace Allen. Yeah, like, like yeah. <laughs> underestimated and just, they don't really. Right. Like, like, we can't take you basically. seriously right. because and that's maybe right. you. Was saying, and that's what yeah. you were saying about Martin. They had yeah, the uh, Gina kind of like. The uh, pan was dark and she was loud. They always make the dark skinned people more. Like aggressive and loud and just in your face and yes. just all of that. Whereas in, in light skin. Fix it. <laughs> oh, yeah, just like all in your face and everything down. like that. But you then the light skin the people are supposed to be more <laughs> controllable. Well, even my friend Dwayne said to me you one time. You could move it. You could fix it. Just be gentle with it. Even uh, my friend Dwayne said to gentle. me one time. He said, don't touch doing, that. Just push it up. I was doing something. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> could you? <laughs> 
you could keep talking because we don't want no dead air. Right. So, uh, yeah, one time Dwayne said to me, stop acting light skin. Well, <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> Do you I'll tell mean, you man, people say like, that stop acting that. light skin. What does that mean? But the <laughs> other day I had this I had this amazing um uh epiphany. Mm-hmm. I was like, why why would we? Mm-hmm. Why would we ever think of white people uh-huh. as scared or punkish or weak or anything like that? You know what I'm saying? Right. Like why like why would you ever think that? Right. After having the experience of being right, after having that experience of kind of like just uh, just how society and how it is, no, most people don't think. No, uh, no, no. I'm not going to sugarcoat this at all. Well, okay. What I want to say is, white people went around the world, raping, pillaging, and enslaving people. Right. Most impressively, black people. So why you would think that white blood makes you weak, I don't know. No. (laughs) I have a poem that says that the kids picked on me for the obvious, uh, what was it, Uh, uh, devil in my blood, like the obvious devil in my blood, you know what I'm saying? But um, we we call that the devil. I, I mean, I don't know. I'm not saying this from a revolutionary fuck whitey type of right. position at all exactly. <laughs> like i am i'm mixed i'm half half and half all my living blood relatives are mm-hmm. white people okay so i'm coming from a very different place i'm coming from a place that says we we're definitely different people with different goals right and i think for black people for melanated people mm-hmm. we like to have fun we like to enjoy life right we like to appreciate the things that matter to our hearts and in our bodies and there is nothing wrong with that you know right um but that has been manipulated especially where my work is concerned that has right. been manipulated you know in so many ways like it's so easy <laughs> because they know your habits they know if they put a disease in your sex right you're gonna get it if you fuck a lot Right. What can I say? Fuck. Well, yeah, <laughs> we said it. So they you know. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like right. they know your habits and stuff. But these are calculated people. These are right. people who plan and plot, and their goals are different. Their goals are um, probably money mm-hmm. and, and their idea of success. But not only that, getting you to subscribe to their ideas of success. That's right. what they do. You see what I'm saying? Exactly. So if you don't really subscribe, you can't. Be half in and half out. You can't have one foot in and one foot foot out. You can't be like, oh, fuck America and fuck Whitey mm-hmm. and look how they treat us. Let me go buy these Jordans. Right. No, uh, um, yeah, no. Exactly. No, you you no, see no, what no. I'm saying? You mm-hmm. can't you can't straddle the fence on this. You, right. you have to accept who you are. The other day, um, Don Trello was saying, you know, she looked at herself as uh black american as opposed to african american and right. the way she explained it i kind of i get it you know mm-hmm. i get why she would say that as far as like her culture and stuff what we have to understand about black american culture is when you drink this Kool-Aid mm-hmm. you're in it right it's very hard to shake your fist at them and take a knee right right while you're spending the money <laughs> it's right. like it's like I, I don't know. It's very strange to me that we haven't decided. You know, it's almost like you want to. It, we're almost like the white lady from slavery, mm. like the wives who sat around and allowed it to happen. Right. They might have felt bad about it on the inside or whatever, but they still participated. Right. They still facilitated. We the- are participating in this America. Mm. We are participating in this. We are giving them fuel. We're giving them all the reasons to want to shoot our kids in the street and right. think that it doesn't matter because we're killing each other. We have too many um, um, hypocrisies. Right. That's the word, right? Yeah. Too much hypocrisy to say, you know, oh, you, you cannot stand <laughs> up and protest about people getting shot if you're shooting the same people. Right. It, in the same doggish ass way on the street. Like, you can't do that. Like, we really do need to look in the mirror mm-hmm. like michael jackson's song say right really look in the mirror and see who we are and what what it is we are doing you got to choose your pimp right that i learned in oakland 
<laughs> you got to choose your pimp. Otherwise, you you know you just out here, little renegade, right. up for grabs an for outlaw. the for the first yeah you an outlaw and you up for mm-hmm. grabs for the first person that's bold enough to take your ass down. Right. That's it. That's all. And right now, that's the police. Right. So <laughs> you have, right. It's the biggest pimp we got right now. You have to decide. Right. Is the revolution your pimp? Right. Is it Jesus? Is it God? Is it is it you know the spirit? Right. You ready to ride for the spirit? Right. You ready to ride for these guns? You ready to ride, you know, what for what? What right. are you actually standing for? And um, for me, I choose the path of love, man. Right. I stand for love because I feel like we can change society. We can change individual relationships and we can change large groups of people right. through love, through communication and respect for one another. First, respect for ourselves. That's a big one. Right. Right? Because right. if you don't respect yourself, you're not going to respect anybody else. Absolutely not. So it starts with pride. Mm-hmm. So that's the foundation. And, and everybody starts with, with the vagina. Right. So <laughs> exactly. I, I go to the womb mm-hmm. of it. Right. <laughs> you know, let's mm-hmm. first appreciate our pussies. Right. <laughs> <laughs> let's appreciate what comes in mm-hmm. and what goes out. Right. 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 And take ownership because, like take you ownership. Said, it is yours. It is yours. It is yours. And that's our foundation there. And then once you respect, the body, mm-hmm. then maybe you can get some respect for women and, and women can find respect again, right. you know, for themselves and we can build from there. But, you know, you can't mistreat a group of people that is responsible for the rearing of your children. Right. Exactly. And expect us to get better generation after generation. So this here, yeah, it's a grassroots movement. It's a love movement I'm excited about. Right. You want to hear another poem? Of course. Of course. <laughs> So we were talking about the love confessions, and I mm-hmm. wrote this one as my love confession. It, it, it's also an exercise that mm-hmm. I do for myself because I have to. I am from Oakland, right? I, you know, can cut the hell out of you with my tongue quickly <laughs> right. without thinking about it. Just like, you know, I think it's important when we're talking about healing. We're talking about loving, especially you doing this Valentine's season right. where love is, yes, you know, in the air and everything. Air, yes. It's important to remember that one of the best ways you can make love to somebody is with your mouth. Right. I mean, speaking to them. Right. (laughs) In other ways, but speaking. But speaking to them. And we, as black women and as Americans, Mm -hmm. have become very callous with our tongues, Mm -hmm. very abusive, you know, with our tongues. Like, it's it's so easy to (laughs) just tear somebody apart. So when I wrote this, I wrote this as an exercise. Right. For myself, and I ended up doing it in a show. Like, right. <laughs> <laughs> it's called Your Black Fist. Okay. Yes. I want my mouth to speak nothing but praise when speaking of you, my beautiful black messiah. I want to be the key to the rusty cage that imprisons black love. Use me. I want to love you as I love my own hands with necessity with appreciation, with respect. In the bedroom, in the boardroom, in the street, and at the table, give you respectable representation, expecting only truth of you and never fearing it. I want to be a queen who makes you proud too, one who makes you understand that making love to me is among your most noble deeds. In me, your seed is not wasted, but savored and manifested before it is measured and devoured, broken down and regenerated on my tongue and through my womb in the game of your school as historic files of your pedigree. I want to work out the kinks of my trying childhood socialization and inferior education with you. Share fantasies and dreams. Make plans to follow through, verbally arrest you before working the kinks back into our hair. Lay down and cool in our sweat. I want to be the chant in your railroad song and go the distance of the track with you like the Panthers insist. Like Montgomery bus trackers persist in the taking of our destiny into our own hands. I want. I want to be the revolution in your black fist eye. I want to be the revolution in your black fist. 
You heard her live, live right here on LE Radio. You've seen them on HBO. Now witness the Poonanny Poets live on stage in Jessica Halter's School of Seduction. This Valentine show will satiate your mind, stimulate your body, and rock your soul with a special love potion of romance therapy, erotic prose, sexy short stories, and body poetry unleashing on stage in sexy vignettes, titillating sketches, and audacious audience role play. Laid on the perfect baby-making soundtrack by Dwayne Wiggins of Tony Tony Tone, falling in love again is as easy as ABC and one two three. With Jessica Halter's School of Seduction, enroll today and you'll be on your way to your sexual greatness. Just get your tickets online at poonannytickets.com and bring your lover or a very close friend for a night of sex education theater you'll not soon forget. Get your tickets online at poonannytickets.com. You're tuned into the LE Radio Show. Follow us on Facebook, IG, and Twitter at Les Elegance Radio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're tuned in to LE Radio. I'm your host, Don. Again, joined here with my co host, Brittany, and the lovely and beautiful Jessica. <laughs> yes. So, um, just listening to that poem, like, I was, the references that you made. And that, I think that's what I love the most about your work and, and the books that I actually have read and, and just listening to the different things. It's like your style of, of the way you write is, is one that I've always appreciated as a, as a poet myself is how you can speak. And if you listen to the words, I, I could be speaking about one thing, but if you pay attention, I'm, I'm actually giving you another message. So there can be multiple messages in this one piece, and it's kind of where are you when you're listening to this? Because mm. you could hear it the first time, and you're you're listening for one thing, and then you know the next time you hear you hear something totally different. So now that piece takes on a whole nother like level for you. And that's what mm-hmm. I think me personally, that's why I enjoy. Like, So that was your third you time do. hearing it. Yeah. So, so what did you like, get from it this time? So this time, it, going back since our topic was about colorism, mm-hmm. and, and I, I was listening more to the revolutionary part of it. So that's what resonated to me this time listening to it mm-hmm. was uh, the references to the Black Panther movement and, mm-hmm. and just all of that and, and just more so the not so much um, – concentrating on the physical aspect that that is touched in the poem, but more of the the revolution and the calling together Mm -hmm. and saying that, you know, we don't need to be at odds with each other. We need to be together in this because together this is how we are able to succeed. Mm -hmm. So that's why, like I said, that's why I enjoy your work so much. Like, and I appreciate listening to it. I could listen to every poem that you had like multiple times because I'm always finding something else that I might have missed the first time. Oh, like, oh, thank you. Awesome. I appreciate. So that. I, are we, before we, before we go, I just, how can everybody f- find you, hear you, where you are? Again, everybody who buy those tickets, you have to go to Eventbrite or you can go to the website. But what are your links so people can? Can definitely subscribe to pretty much um, all roads uh, come from punanilove dot com. From Punani Love, I think I have everything linked pretty good on there. Okay. So you can get to our Facebook, which is Punani Poets, and Twitter is Punani Poets, and right. Instagram Punani Poets. Um, you'll find that we have some other links and stuff because we have uh, Hip Inc., which your radio station is right. part of. Hip Inc., our nonprofit based here in Georgia. And um, there's information about that on there. There's um, all show tickets and mm-hmm. everything, you know, are on there. And samples of books. If you join Hip Inc., you can get free downloads of all kinds of cool things, right. ebooks, music, videos. But um, if, you, if you can't make it to a show, mm-hmm. and that's okay, and I feel bad for you. Right. But that's <laughs> you're okay. Gonna go. <laughs> because you can go to punani tv nice. dot com yes. and not only can you see the full real sex episode on okay. punani tv like mm-hmm. all of it yes and um you can also see the full um black love american style mm-hmm. uh video right. like it's in like an hour so like you can right. grab some popcorn or a vibrator and like <laughs> right. sit there right. on there <laughs> mm-hmm. black love american style yeah. punani poets on there yeah. 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 Wait, I'm confused. I One of my was, DVDs is, yeah. is online. You could watch the whole thing online. No, I thought that was some 
Black Love. Maybe I'm thinking of something else. You're thinking of a TV show called Love American Style from yeah. the 70s. Yeah. 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 I had not, a, not the same thing. I had no. a production that I called Black Love American Style. I handed it to you when I came yeah. in. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. I did see it. That's why I wish you, you said saw it. I was like, oh, okay. You're yeah. going to make me go look at it's it. It's a DVD. <laughs> oh, yeah. We got some cool stuff here. The Punani Poor's Valentine's Day Couple Pass. Uh, this is a DVD. That's a CD. This is a CD. We have the Head Doctor Show soundtrack, mm-hmm. uh, Ghetto Girl Blue, Speak the Unspeakable, and your famous, famous verbal penetration. Oh, yeah. Your yeah. first book <laughs> that you ever did. We have the music CD here. You will also be able to pick these up at the shows, right? You'll be able to purchase these at the show? Yeah, I think we're going to have um, we're, we have the baskets. They'll yeah, have, we have the, um, oh yeah, we're going to have the, the baskets auction, that right. we are auctioning off. It's going to be $5. Y'all go out and spend that on the lottery. Mm-hmm. So y'all could spend it and once you pay $5 for this basket, it's going to have some lovely Punani gifts, some lovely gifts by from me well not by me but i know some people out there probably like me and uh <laughs> me not like me like like me but i know y'all probably in the handcuffs and choking well you could just use your hand to choke but it'll have some handcuffs and some ropes and some candles and some oils and yeah. stuff like that so, up in there and then we have the dvds yeah uh the punani pores verbal penetration sex education theater and I see this says it's saying on HBO, and it's something across, so I know that's a nibble that that's covering up. Um, <laughs> here we got Poonani Uncut, Blame It on the Tongue. Wait, mm. can I tell you this story about how her nipple came out? Yeah, go ahead. So <laughs> <laughs> she went and bought pasties because we hadn't uh-huh. done actual nudity in my show since HBO, right? Right. Because, you know, venues are funny when it comes to nipples. Right. So she had bought pasties. But the guys uh-huh. in, in the dressing room told her they were too big. They didn't look right. Uh, she so shouldn't she, wear them. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> she come popping yeah. out there with nipples. I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> filming. But, yeah, yeah so oh, that, that okay. video actually has nipple. And then by the time I got to the next one, Black Love American Style, I just said, fuck it. Oh, okay. And she's naked, too. Right. So, yeah, <laughs> and then you got the second scene. Yeah, the second scene, that's that's, you know. R, not not X. That's R. Rated well, there's no X. There's yes. what you mean X. Rated. Rated. Oh, okay. Is yeah. Uh, and then we have the head doctor, the intimate theater for both of you. Yeah, the head doctor's cool. It's it's real simple. Black yeah. box setting again. It's real okay. Nice oh, okay. So you all will be able to get um these in a little gift baskets. We're referring off, referring off the gift baskets, $5. Yes. Um, this week, we will have that up and running so you can purchase those tickets. It's a fundraiser for hipinc.org. So all um, proceeds from this basket um, drawing, well, what, what draw bag, what we call it? Get yeah, so it, it's a fundraiser. So yeah. you're basically buying, like, raffle tickets. Like how yeah. you do a church, you know, and other things you buy. You know, the more raffle tickets you buy, the, the more likely you'll, you'll be able to give it. Yeah. And we'll have the awesome Mrs. Halter pick the lucky winner who will get the basket. So you, when you get to the show and everything else like that, or we can send it out to you, Melody, yeah, if you don't if you, make it to the show. don't make it to the mm-hmm. show. Um, so you'll be jam-packed with everything for Valentine's Day weekend, so you'll have some fun. Lots of good stuff. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Lots of good stuff. So speaking of, of new activities, mm-hmm. um, I think I had proposed to your um, radio station mm-hmm. that we do, a, uh, we auction some dates. Yes, yes. So, and so I was wondering, so um, mm. Don Trella. I say as long as no sex is included. <laughs> Would you participate no. in the in the auction? Could we auction you off? To I don't someone? know. I got to check with my girlfriend. Yeah, you might want to check on that. <laughs> but <laughs> and, yes, and see yes, if it's okay. I think you have a lot of fans. I think. You uh, yeah, but I tried that before, and me and my last <laughs> boys, and yeah, no. I don't we'll know. do this one a little different though. Like this, this will be a lot more controlled. Organized. Yeah, if it's controlled and we auction yeah. everybody off and everybody go together as a group and not a, a solo. I don't want a solo one on one. I did a um, 
what you call that a round table date thing now, what you didn't i what, say don't be no punk when i came to your bro. radio show <laughs> i'm not a punk but don't, don't you no know punk. don't y'all know what you call the round table date thing where you sit down you talk to somebody for 20 seconds and then oh, you speed move dating. On. yeah that okay. yeah okay i did that right mm-hmm. not so the same thing. I, well, i'm just saying i i i i, I did that so it was supposed to be a second part, but I don't even know what happened to the second part or what happened to it. But I, I did that just to try it out with a friend of mine. She was single. Well, we was both single at the time. I had my eye on somebody. But we was both single at the time, so I said, okay, cool. So we went and we did it. And during that time, you know, we went around the table. We put the number, whatever, somebody. I don't even know. But anyway, at the time, you know, of course, because of social media, the first thing and the questions right. they asked was your Facebook page and social pages or whatever. So a couple of the people that was on there, I attempted to try to go on a one-on-one date with mm. that would be a little more, I guess, one-on-one, I guess, or whatever. Right. Was a, and it was not a good experience at all. <laughs> I did with well, three. I went out to three. Make a and love it. confession. I mean, yeah. a love but connection. See, you say that, but women and <laughs> people nowadays, you say that, and that's the same thing. I was thinking, oh yeah, I right, we could hang out, we could chill. Yeah, this is for charity. Yeah. So, so this, this is, is just. Mm, I gotta think really hard. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, if there are any nice, handsome women out mm-hmm. there. Who wants to participate? Um, Brittany is going to be working on yes. an auction of studs. Yes. See, I couldn't go in there no way because I'm not a stud. I am. Okay. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> I'm you, a and, stud. you and Gina with this stud stuff. But I, I'm not, I don't auctioned. identify as a stud, so yes. I couldn't be in that. I'm a stud. <laughs> so. A yeah. stud in heels. <laughs> Hey, Licking your be. lips like that, like for real, for real. It could be. LL Cool J lick his lips. Right. He sure do it. He's sexy <laughs> with it, too. <laughs> yeah, so we will uh-huh. have, so that's something that we have slated mm-hmm. for April. So we're working on that mm-hmm. and getting that together. So I'm really excited about that. Yes, yeah, and all sizes, slim, muscular. Right, all, everybody. everybody. is is open to everybody, light skin, dark skin. Right. Biracial. <laughs> right. No colorism with this one. Yeah, it's no colorism. <laughs> White people, Puerto Ricans, it don't matter. Right. If you're interested, hit Brittany up at the show. Yes. I can't believe after all this time, people what? are still talking about colorism. Yes. Right. Yeah. Yes, it it's is. It's a little embarrassing. It's, it's embarrassing, very embarrassing, but it, 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 it Don't happens. You think? It's very it is embarrassing. embarrassing. Especially right. when you got certain people try to guilt you into stuff. You know, like when yeah. I was talking about the dark skinned chick that thought I didn't want to date her because she was dark skinned and it was more about the weave and the chip nail polish and <laughs> the, the run over shoes. The surface. And all yeah, I know it had is, nothing to do with that. I didn't even notice that she was dark skinned because of the other eye sores. <laughs> all I know is when y'all find this light skin privilege, can I get some? Right. <laughs> Right, yeah. I'm a redhead. I'm that child over here. I don't know what y'all talking about. That's what I was telling I'm Gina. Color, I was yeah, like, I'm, I'm color, color neutral, but my mom treated me like a princess. But <laughs> I'm oh. color neutral. <laughs> oh my god, I don't even understand it. I, I don't. Yeah, we I don't are believe. Ah, beautiful, beautiful, you beautiful sound just black like women. Yes, yes, like we. we are. Oh, oh, like, hues. Cocoa, don't you need to have too. variety with it if everybody right. did look the same? Hey, did you see that episode of you kind of young? Did, did you see know. that episode? It was called, it was an episode of um, The Twilight Zone, okay, and it was called The Eye of the Beholder. Oh, yeah. I think I've heard reference to okay, it. Okay, you I gotta see, see it. When you, if you, it, everybody out there who was who tuned in to listen to the conversation about colorism mm-hmm. that they had earlier tonight, just go check that episode out if you can. I, I really feel like like I'm an OG now, mm-hmm. so I feel mm-hmm. like it's it's my job to like preserve old culture and old storytelling to kind of give it back to y'all because nobody's giving it to y'all. Yeah, and I know I'm just talking about Twilight Zone, so yeah. it don't sound like a big deal, but really that show is a good show because yeah, it, was. it, it really it was goes in black and white, and it kept your attention. It, it was really black did, and white. It, but but if you could if if you could watch it, it's called The Eye of the Beholder. That's mm-hmm. the episode. And it's about this lady. And you look at her and she looks beautiful. You know, whatever the oh, yeah. standard and of everybody else white around beauty was her is not beautiful. Why are you messing up the story? Oh, okay. <laughs> so she's beautiful beep, or beep, whatever. Beep, that part out. 
by our by our <laughs> standards of beauty and um there and she's in like this place to get a surgery to mm-hmm. have her face changed mm. Mm. and because they're telling her like you know you're ugly and we need to do surgery on you to change your face now everybody around her has like mushed faces like this oh wow and stuff right but she looks like regular but it's the eye of the beholder is the point like right. everybody else looks Distorted, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. And they're telling her, and so it really is a very interesting lesson and in something very simple, which is consider the source. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Always consider the source. If you're looking at what you know, the standard of beauty is, you have to decide what that standard is for yourself. Right. You know, you can't let society tell you like we we would. Oh my God! But we you got are certain going people crazy. That, yeah, right you now. got certain people that do that. They date or look for a certain type of female because they want to appear, a, appeal, a, y'all shit. Appear. <laughs> yeah, a certain way to society or to their friends or their family. So they need a woman to look a certain way. They only want a light skinned woman because again, that's she what they foreign. She, she is foreign. She's beautiful and she's yeah. this and she's that. So you have some situations where some people will be in a bad relationship and, and this is, I, I'm not, I'm not real familiar with the light skin benefits, but I do know they're pretty girl benefits because some people will put up with a person's shit because she's beautiful and versus a woman over here who might be a little more darker complexion, but they support you, you know, mentally, emotionally, and they give back, you know, all the other things. But they rather have the, gr- the chick with the big booty, the big tits, mm-hmm. light skin, long Brazilian, whatever weave. <laughs> that's 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 the society we live in. Uh, okay, I am not at all here to take anything. I, I don't want to even. So what you give got- the illusion that that. Mm-hmm. That I don't have my own view on this. Right. I feel very strongly that uh, light skinned people are equal to dark skinned people in the same way that black people are equal to white people. You see what I'm saying? Got it. We're not really, mm-hmm. you know, um, there really is no equal. Like it, it's all in the eye of the beholder. Right. But I do kind of feel like people. I I feel like a lot of times light skinned girls have to take the L. A lot. A lot. Light skinned girls have to take the L because it's assumed that they have some type of benefits Mm -hmm. and their benefits should um, kind of, kind of, uh, balance out like the benefits that you get from society should right. balance out so i should be able to insult you right now right so you're like shamed a dark-skinned into, person yeah. you're shamed into silence right. light-skinned girls are shamed into silence so we all have our own issues and plights mm-hmm. me personally i had to learn how to fight very early because in my community you got your ass whooped if you were light skin. So to me, mm. that's not a privilege. Yeah. <laughs> that's not light skin privilege. This is my yeah, my I, introduction yeah. to the black community was that running from <laughs> from school right. home. I had to learn how to fight. I had to grow my nails out and you know the yeah, whole yeah, thing. Yeah, because you was a pretty little biracial girl. So, but if people got picked on for all kinds of reasons, this boy named Paul got picked on because he was just really nice and passive. Mm-hmm. This boy in my school, like, uh, I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah. This mm-hmm. other boy got picked on because he acted like a girl. Like, he was kind of feminine. Right. Mm-hmm. And so everybody got picked on for different reasons. That was my cross to bear. I thought I couldn't talk. Okay. So everybody is something. You know, people mm-hmm. people are mean. Just people yeah. in general are mean. Kids are horrible. But as far as, like, do <laughs> I feel like I have some type of privilege, like, extra... I'm no, no, no. <laughs> no. I really don't. And I've, I'm really, I'm not even being, mm-mm. Mm-mm. no, I survived some crazy marriages. I've been through physical abuse and raped and molested mm-hmm. and, um, mistreated. Can't get a job any faster than, than any other black person that I know. Right. Like, but I know people do believe that, right. That is true. But I personally just don't see mm-hmm. where, you know what I'm saying? Maybe, Maybe, maybe on site, Mm -hmm. you know, when people first meet you or whatever, maybe they feel a certain amount of comfort. Right. 
or 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 don't feel a certain amount of dis-ease based on what's on the news and stuff. Right. But, you know, it's a lot of little cute little Puerto Rican robbers and stuff. <laughs> you right. know what I'm saying? They be having them on the news all the time. So right. it's not... It's not just dark people that get dragged through the mud in the media or anything like that. Absolutely. Exactly. And this was LE Radio, and tonight's show was Colorism. You're pretty for a dark-skinned girl, and I have benefits because I'm light-skinned. Not. That was the title of the show. <laughs> that was the topic earlier. I saw well, it. I know. I saw it. I was oh, like, oh, my God. <laughs> oh, because I'm like, what? That was the, the yeah. topic. I was like, I hope they don't ask me about that. But, yeah, I had to think about it. And I'm like, nah. Oh. No? Okay. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't, like I said, I, I'm color neutral. So I didn't experience that other than the one chick that tried to guilt me into dating her. <laughs> and I didn't even know that she was dark-skinned. She, but she tried to guilt me. Oh, you just, I mean, really tried to make me feel bad for not going out with her. She tried to play the color game. Like, oh, okay, you dark skinned and what that mean to me? Hmm. Well, I had known her for a while, but she pointed out that everybody I had been with was my complexion or extremely, they were my complexion. If they were black, they was my complexion. But most of the women she seen me with was biracial. So she thought that I only, I prefer biracial women. And I told her, no, it wasn't that. That's just how it always happened. It just so happened that the women I dated, mm. the black women I dated, which I ain't been with a lot of people, but the couple of black women I dated, they was my complexion. And then the rest of them, they was biracial. And they just happened to be a lighter complexion of the biracial side. But I didn't well, salt them out. I didn't go in the club and say, oh, let me see who in here is biracial because I need a woman with some pretty <laughs> silky curly hair. I didn't well, do that. I mean, your preference is your preference now. Right, you shouldn't have right. to apologize I didn't for, apologize, but for I don't, any when preference. it comes to complexion, I don't have a preference. I just always end up with beautiful biracial women. I don't have a preference. <laughs> She's so funny. They, no, I'm serious. <laughs> they are, tra- that's what well, I, that's, I usually that's end what, up with beautiful African people. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what, it, that's what I, I like, track. I, I, what, I like some, I do like some chocolate. But yeah, that's what I am not one to. If somebody comes and they just and are, are an amazing person mm-hmm. or their spirit resonates with me, I'm not really looking at physical stuff. Yeah, see, that's how I am. Yeah. I go off of energy, and those are the ones that I typically always end up connected with. I just go off of energy. Right. Yeah. It, but now my son, who's you know he he's black, but he looks I don't know like Middle Eastern or something. yeah, he he's looks something. A, I don't know. He does right. <laughs> He but said he, he doesn't yeah. date girls darker than him. He doesn't. That's just his thing. And I have a friend who... In some cultures... He didn't like, say don't like, like He skin. wants somebody that look like him. Yeah, in yeah. some cultures, that's his thing. Especially, like, that's really bad in, like, Latin cultures, especially. So, like, you you are to date someone who is lighter than yourself and have children with someone who is lighter than yourself to kind of breed out the, the dark skin. Like, that's really right. bad in places like... Cuba and Colombia, Panama, like places like that. They actually, Mexico is really bad with it too. Yeah. But um, so yeah, they do believe and actually practice that. Well, okay. So from a political standpoint, if you take your personal feelings out, mm-hmm. if you take your emotions out of the conversation, you understand what I'm saying? Right. If you're not feeling like, oh, why are you dejecting me? Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, because I'm dark or whatever. You have to look at the bigger picture, which is, uh, experience right in people's experience the darker you are the worse you're treated absolutely so naturally a culture is if they have the power to to breed themselves out of poor circumstances then they will right now well, listen yeah. carefully people i'm saying take your feelings out be an emotional thug about it and right. listen to what i'm actually saying which is you know that that is a practical choice that a culture it, it's not it's not under. Mm. It's not not understandable. Right. That makes right. sense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's understandable. Right. That uh, a culture would decide to do that. I, I did hear that in Latin America is really, really, really intense. Yeah. Though. It is. Very did much. you know that th- you're going to edit this in a different way, right? No, nah, I'm a lead. It's just like um, it's okay. just gonna stay like this. We live. Ain't no editing to this. And <laughs> I was trying to be off. Like we we ended the show. Like we ended the show. Like twenty minutes ago, and then y'all got into <laughs> these other conversations. <laughs> but of course we're live. What did you think? Yeah. Yeah, oh. we're live. Yeah. <laughs> oh. 
But anyway, I'm just gonna I do say have just one thing. I just want to say before you one. say that because you long winded. <laughs> you gonna say ahead. you want to? Yeah, no, she I'm gonna, gonna say she want to say this one thing. So <laughs> just hold on, hold on, because why we still on the thing about preferences? I was saying that I do have um, a friend that is my complexion, but she prefers dark skin. And the reason why she said she liked dark skinned women because she liked her meat to be done. She don't want she ain't going licking <laughs> on no little pink punanis. She don't I'm like serious. Pink. She said she don't like. She said she tried to and and she she a little no. She's darker than me. She she even think that I'm too light. She was like I don't know because I think your thing might be pink and I'm like it is not pink, not by a long shot. But I'm just saying we talking about punani. We got right, punani right. pulled off here, but that is her. Your lips are pink though, so it do kind of seem like it might be pink. Now you sound like her. (laughs) (laughs) But anyway, my lips are not pink. But yeah, that's the reason why. Because she said she tried. Nervous. Mm -hmm. She tried to date a light skinned person, and she said that she didn't. She just prefer that it the black vagina just was more appealing to her. I hear that. I I like my meat well done. I do. (laughs) I do. Um, I was gonna say interesting thing is. a lot of people don't realize. See, there was a time where mestizo people just didn't exist. There was no such thing. Mm-hmm. But the Spaniards, when they traveled over here, they didn't bring any white women with them for 200 years. Yeah. 200 years. Your whole culture, like your people, mm-hmm. all mixed people. All you guys are like new people, brand new people, like what, right. 400 years old at the most. Yeah. Brand we're, we're new not, people. Yeah. Like in my country specifically. Huh? Huh? I said, are you trying to say light-skinned black people are mixed? No, no she's I'm specifically telling her, like my country. Like, oh, yeah. okay. Because. Um, yeah, South America and yeah, all and the. The Cape Verdean the, Islands and everything. Oh, okay. Like we're, because they didn't bring women. So they pretty much just. Use the ones they used found. Use the, the slaves that they had. And so you have, like in my country, we all range in different skin tones. But we have like the European um, features with the, you know, the um, the high cheekbones and the the colored eyes and everything like that yeah because we're just literally we (laughs) came into existence that way Mm -hmm. they have some early writings about about race mixing i I think a lot of people don't really understand like how serious this is like Mm -hmm. i was worried when jesse williams is that his name from the oh yeah jesse williams came out when he did that what he did Mm -hmm. (sighs) mm-hmm As a light skinned person, I got nervous. Cause I'm right. like, you standing up there as close to white as you can get down right. there, and you are like, these people are looking at you with fear, right. thinking this is what could happen to us if we do not keep our foot on black people's necks. Mm-hmm. You understand what I'm saying to right. you? The only way to get rid of white people is to fuck them away. Pretty much. You understand what I'm saying? Pretty much. It's imperative. That's why they don't want to. <laughs> it is imperative that they make sure that you don't look attractive mm-hmm. to their women for survival purposes. You understand what I'm right, saying? Right, right. Is it like, you know, already you got strong, handsome athletes and right. robust, and you thinking, you know, the natural order of things. You the strong survive, and right. and strong men attract women. Mm-hmm naturally by the by the laws of nature they're attracted to right. some men who are strong who look like they can give them good babies that's right. just the way we're wired so it's important for them to keep black men looking as unattractive as possible mm-hmm. i.e keeping them broke keeping them down you see what i'm saying yes. and keeping them incarcerated and that's why when i look at this from a political standpoint i think why do we keep giving them what they want? Like, do you know you can educate your way out of this bag? Right. Even if you define what that education is, even if you work for yourself or decide that, hey, we don't need anybody to hand us anything. We have our own money, our own power, you know. Right. Y'all keep, no, I guess y'all want to just stop and leave that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, we're ready to go yeah we go. We just i mean we're just chopping it right, up now right. we're having a really good time <laughs> okay. thanks ladies thanks of for course, the of for course the, uh, thank you so much for opportunity coming to come by okay. hold on 